therefore declined. I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Adjourn debate on the second reading of the Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill and the amendment proposed to it. Speaker. The Honourable Simon Bridges. Mr. Speaker, what a fantastic uh, budget delivered for New Zealanders by the Honourable Stephen Joyce last week we saw. What a fantastic budget for New Zealanders. You see, Mr Speaker, many budgets can deliver, let's say, for public services. Some budgets can deliver for infrastructure. Some can deliver for social investment. Some can see uh, the debt of the country go down over time. Some can deliver uh, a family package for incomes. But this is a budget, Mr Speaker, that delivered in all of those areas, that delivered in all of those things for New Zealanders from the top of New Zealand right down to the bottom. And I think we should be really proud of that as a country and the results it will deliver for New Zealand. And Mr Speaker, the reason for that is economy, an economy that is growing incredibly strongly, growing at 3% or over, actually over the next few years is growing on average above that, I think peaking at 3.8%. It's employment that's rising, gone up a couple of hundred thousand in the last three years, going up 215,000 in the next three to four years. I'm glad the member over there mentions unemployment declining, set to decline to four and a half percent, very low uh, by uh, developed country standards, and we're seeing all of that happen. Meanwhile, surpluses for the Crown are growing. Mr Speaker, that did not happen by accident. That did not happen uh, by us simply shutting our eyes, our eyes and watching it all unfold. It happened, Mr Speaker, because of great businesses around New Zealand that had the confidence to get in, to do it, to employ people, to take on risk, and from a government that has continued to deliver fiscal, macro and microeconomic reforms that have made a difference, that have been persistent, that have been consistent over time for New Zealanders, Mr Speaker. And what is also true is that you can't have one without the other. You cannot have the better public services, the infrastructural investment, the paying down of debt, the family incomes package that sees New Zealanders, 1.3 million New Zealanders, $26 on average better off, without also having that strong economy that this national government has delivered from a GFC uh, into the figures and the economy that we have today. And Mr Speaker, what Stephen Joyce has done in a range of areas is worth going through. In public services, seven billion dollars of investment, seven billion, seven billion, the biggest public services package over that period New Zealand has seen. In health, in education, in law and order, in social development, the biggest ever total spend. And what that means is for New Zealanders, better mental health services. Police, 1,100 more staff out there making New Zealanders, hard-working Kiwis, safer on our streets and in their homes. A new ministry for children, Mr Speaker, that will make a really significant uh, difference to those vulnerable New Zealanders. And an infrastructure, Mr Speaker, an incredibly strong budget on something we know a growing economy, a growing New Zealand uh, deserves, some four billion dollars of investment this year. The biggest capital spend we've certainly seen uh, in real terms uh, this century, Mr Speaker, it really will make a difference. And of course, it's not just it's not just that four billion. That's the new spend. Actually in context, we are talking about thirty two and a half billion dollars that government is investing in infrastructure around the country, from the NZTAs and the roads, from the housing New Zealand and the housing, the rail, the broadband, the better schools, the better hospitals. We are the government of infrastructure, Mr O'Rourke, and we are investing in it like never before. I take my own uh, area, $9 billion dollars. Uh, of investment over the next four years in state highways alone. $9 billion. 
540 kilometres of new lanes in that area, uh, in, in around uh, New Zealand. Well, you know, that would be rail as well as road. We're doing a bit of that too, I might say. Incredible investment in infrastructure, a growing economy and uh, a growing New Zealand. And Mr Speaker, a families package that will make a real difference to New Zealanders. It will make a real difference to those low and middle income New Zealanders who uh, may you know, be struggling to make ends meet and who will receive real money in their pockets. It will make a real difference to those with families, Mr Speaker, because of what we're doing with working for families. It will make a real difference to those who perhaps have housing stress, whether that's in Auckland, Tauranga or other parts of New Zealand, Mr Speaker. Simply put, 1.3 million Kiwis will receive an average of $26 more every week because of what we're doing. A couple of billion dollars of money they've worked hard for that they deserve back in their pockets, that we are putting back in their pocket because we've got the economy that can afford it, we've got an economy that is growing, we're making the decisions that mean we can invest back in them. And it comes in the form of income relief, Mr Speaker. It comes in the form of working for families relief. It comes in the form of accommodation relief for those New Zealanders uh, who, uh, who deserve it and are working hard. And that's a really interesting uh, thing there, Mr Speaker. And all the while, I hear behind me, well, credit where credit's due, actually, because what we know is the Green Party and the New Zealand First Party are supporting it. They might do so begrudgingly, but credit where credit's due. They are voting for it. They know that those New Zealanders, those one3 a million working New Zealanders, Mr O'Rourke, you know, the member over there knows, they deserve what we're doing. They know that as we can, we will do more. Our friends in New Zealand first in the Green Party. You never thought, you, they know that. But Labour Party, the Labour Party voted against it, Mr Speaker. And now they're working out, I'll be interested to hear from the member Jacinda Ardern, now they're working out, or they're trying to, why they did that. They're working out why they did vote against it. Ian Lees Galloway doesn't know. He knows it in Palmerston North. He knows in Palmerston North there are thousands of New Zealanders and families who, uh, who deserve the relief that we are providing. We are giving them back. Oh. Uh, point of order. Uh, no, I just wonder if the member would like to yield so I could explain what I know about what's going on in Palmerston no, North. No, no, that's just interrupting the debate. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Mr Speaker, there's a member who's clearly worried about his seat because what? He, he's leaving! Because, Mr Speaker, he's giving up the ghost early, Mr Speaker. He knows we've got a great candidate in that seat. He knows we've got the policies and better public services and infrastructure and paying down debt and families relief that will make a really, really big difference, Mr Speaker. And, Mr Speaker, of course, what we know is that well, we don't know, actually. What would they stop? My challenge is to the next speaker. Uh, they didn't support it. What would they stop? Would they support the infrastructural investment? Their former leader, Phil Goff, makes it quite clear. He thinks, fair enough, he's fighting his corner. It should be more investment. Well, would they stop the half a billion dollars down payment we are making in the city rail link? Would they stop the investment that is going into infrastructure in Auckland, Ms Ardern, and right around you? I doubt they would. She's confirming, I doubt they would. Would they, would they stop the better public services, the seven billion dollars more going into health, into education, into law, and all of these. I doubt it, Mr. Speaker. So I'd like to know what they stop. Would they stop actually when all is said and done? The family incomes package that means twenty-six dollars a week on average to one point three million Kiwis who deserve that money. What is it? that they would stop. They voted against our bill. They don't know why, and they don't have a clue what they'd stop, Mr Speaker. And I think we heard it right from Claire Trevette, actually, this morning, Mr Speaker, that there's a window of opportunity for the Labor Party come 23 June, where they get to have the power back, Mr Speaker. They get to have the power back because at that point in time, it's the caucus members who get to decide their, little, uh, their leader, uh, Mr Speaker. 23 June. 
Well, I've got another 23, uh, 23rd of the month, Mr Speaker, uh, that I'd like to bring to their attention. attention. It's 23rd September. It's called Election Day. And we've got the policies on this side of the House that back New Zealanders that deliver a brighter future for New Zealanders. I'm really proud to be part of a budget that's delivering for all Kiwis. Mr Speaker. Uh, I call Jacinda Ardern. Marlowe, Mr Speaker. Quite